friends, survivors, welcome to another day of sales from Mo Power Electronics. What's in your outlet? And today we're going to be covering specifically traps, defenses that you will be needing for your base in order to take care of, well, all these people behind me. Look at all these zombies. I even had to call in some of uh, Navis Gain's finest, the cops and some big beefy demolishers just to keep the order a little bit. It's been just a smash and grab here at Mo Power. But before we get into that, something has come to light. You, you probably watching this, if you're one of the 1 in 10 who have subscribed, thank you very much. But likely, you're one of those 80 or 90% of people who are watching my videos and forgetting to subscribe. Come on, I know it's difficult. So, you know, down to the bottom right there, there's the subscribe button. I would definitely appreciate if you give me the honor of just subscribing to my channel. A lot of views, a lot of people come. I think I have something like 90,000 people visiting my channel every month and only 10,000 of those actually are subscribed. So if, you know, if some of those uh, 80,000 remaining actually subscribe, come on, I would be growing a lot faster and be able to make a lot more videos. So it is free. I'm making all this for your enjoyment, all free. So just tag that little, tap that little subscribe button at the bottom, maybe a like as well, if you really enjoyed the videos. I will definitely appreciate it. Don't forget. So I'm gonna go through different traps, electric fences, I'm gonna do dot traps, blade traps, and of course shotgun and auto turrets to let you know how you can defend your base. So let's make sure we move in and uh, take care of some of these people. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, unfortunately, I'm shooting blanks here. How embarrassing. Ah, oh, not able to kill a single one of them. So I appreciate all of you following me in here for the electricity trap guide and... What the? Bob? What, what happened? Where are all the deadbeats? Can you get some of them in here? I'm making a video here. Come on. It looks like no one is here shopping. Come on. Just pay them. Pay them 100 dukes. Anyone who comes in. All right, right. That's a lot better. At least some of them came in here. And now, of course, they're looking to buy things. Just like you are. 50% off. Everything is on sale. Except maybe the stripper on the right there. I mean, she's telling me, you know, sell for her. So... We're going to be looking at the traps thing. And what you really want to get into is your intellect attribute. And try to bump that up because we're looking at advanced engineering. And you need to be fairly high level to unlock that. And the first one you want to get to is number three. Because that allows you to do things like electric fences, blade traps, and dart traps. It's only as you go up to four that you can make the shotgun turrets. And five that you can make the SMG auto turrets. Not that those ones are necessarily that important. But at least go to four inventors. You can make the shotgun turrets because those can be really good at short range concentrated base defense as it says here and if you don't want to unlock them through the perks you can actually also unlock some of them from schematics electric fence post schematic find it read it and you can craft it dart trap schematic same thing blade trap schematic shotgun turret and smg auto turret schematic if you find all these ones you can actually craft them without having the skill however there's actually one really good reason for having skills if you're having a very trap heavy base because starting at electrician you'll see Gain 20% experience from electrical trap kills. Goes up to 35 and 50%, which means that if let's say your dart trap kills a zombie, you'll take you'll receive 20, 35, or 50% of experience of the total allotment for that zombie, which really can add up during a long haul night. So it's definitely something to recommend. I try to get it up to at least 20 or 35, and at in the sort of towards the end game, I'll do 50% just to get those extra experience. And once you have the skill, so you've unlocked it through schematic, go to your workbench. This is where you do all the crafting. And electric fence post, really simple. Just forged iron and electrical parts. This one is definitely something that every base should have. I definitely highly recommend it. A second one is coming to the dart trap. Really good as well. Forged iron, mechanical parts, and electrical parts also require some oil, I guess, to uh, oil up the inside. So this one is also really good. This one also requires darts, as you can see, iron darts, which each take three iron and one clay. So they're not that expensive, not super cheap. Early on, it can be a little bit difficult to keep uh, the iron stock specifically. Late game, it's super easy. So definitely dart traps are, at least for me, a really favorite. Blade traps are another really good one, especially now in Alpha 19, they're no longer set off demolishers. And that's something they did back in Alpha 18, so they were fairly useless because, you know, the demolisher will run in, get set off, and then they blow up everything around it, and that really sucks. So, forged iron, forged steel, obviously for the blade, mechanical, electrical parts, and some oil. Really good for base defense. And of course, they're really close range as well. Darts can fire fairly far, 
but blades obviously is just a three by three area. Coming to the advanced turrets here, we have the first one, which is a shotgun auto turret. For steel, polymers, oil, you also need a motion sensor, so make sure you get some of that, and you need the shotgun parts. It's only three, which is not really that bad. Once you get to this one, you probably have a bunch of shotgun parts laying around, so easily to craft. They also, of course, take some shotgun shell, the ammo, so make sure you have a bunch of these ones. It will deplete a fair bit of them, so make sure you have a good ammunition stock. SMG auto turret, you can also craft motion sensor, kind of find this uh, different uh, different order here, but motion sensor, steel, handgun parts, and this is from the pistols, etc. Make sure you save up some of these ones, oil and scrap polymers. They will be using the nine millimeter ammo, so make sure you have a bunch of these ones laying around as well. Actually, you can always go to your local trader to buy some of these electrical traps as well. They usually stock maybe the fences, sometimes the draw traps and the blade traps and the shotgun on auto turrets. And if nothing else, like I said, we have a sale here. 50% off, everything must go. We, you know, dart traps, blade traps, and the shotgun turrets. And of course, we have these nice electric fences. Uh, if you buy a package deal, we'll even throw in a flat uh, screen TV as well, one or two of them, depending on how much you're buying. I mean, come on, it doesn't get better. Oh yeah, I mean, it's a killer deal. I definitely have, whoo, heat stroke. Sorry, ma'am, sorry, ma uh, medic, medic. Yes, please help her up. I, I know you guys want to buy things as well, but you know, heat stroke, take care of her. So how do you hook everything up and actually use them? Well, let's get started on the electric fence posts. And these are the early game. Once you start getting some of this, either through crafting or maybe if you're uh, just buying them, I would definitely suggest put picking them up because they can really save your ass. So the first thing you do, you put them down, obviously. You can actually rotate them as well. So you can lay them down everything. They do need a little bit of support. So you can rotate them around. They are too high. But if you see, depending on how I'm rotating them, you can lay them down and stuff like that. So they fit fairly well wherever you want to. And it's, they're really easy. You right click on your generator, make sure you have uh, fuel and, and engines inside right click on electric fence one then you go from electric fence one to electric fence two you see this you see the yellow one means that there's power flowing here and the blue one is the wire in between this one this one doesn't get broken so you can't attack or anything the zombies won't actually break it but it will signify that once it's activated it will send electricity through and anything passing through will get bust and we're going to show that here so i'm going to turn this on I'm gonna turn it on like that. And sorry, all of you, unfortunately, you have to uh, probably get, oh, well, sorry, that's not what I want to do. You saw I started taking the electricity buff, which means I took damage. I went down to 176, so it's about 24, plus I was slowed. And if I do the same thing here with all these deadbeats, they should be running over here to try and get me. Come on, one at a time, you see? slowed slowed they will get through though as you notice they will eventually get through but it takes a while especially if they're just walking if they're feral they get through a little bit faster but otherwise you see these regular deadbeats see how long they actually take because they get stunned and then they get stunned again and then they get stunned again and that's really useful for just just bashing them in their head like that if you use something other than maybe a sledgehammer you'll probably be able to uh, beat a lot faster but you see he's stuck he can't get out of it because he get, keeps getting stuck every time he tries to move so just from using you saw i'm not in god mode here just from using two electric fences i took out something like what eight or nine regular zombies and they didn't really do much damage to me because they get stunned they took take some damage from this as well not enough to kill them normally but it definitely weakens them up and it slows them down so let's show that again let's do that now let's do mr uh, mrs uh, stripper here she shall come in and you see her wiggle and jiggle and eventually after i think about four seconds three seconds she normally tries to move but sometimes she just gets bust immediately and doesn't have a chance to move really useful now if she was a feral one you'll see something slightly different because she's faster now she's actually through so while she is buffed and taking the electricity damage she actually is through so take that into account radiated ones of course because they're running let's see what happens now that she is uh, getting unbuffed she's obviously through and she'll be beating me and trying to eat me up so regular zombies is just fine feral ones they just get buffed once and that's it and uh, then they're gonna be through one important thing to keep in mind with the electric fences is that they will be degrading as they get used up. 
So one of the sides and not the sending one, this is the sending one, electrical fence one, but the receiving end, electrical fence two, will be degrading slowly, slowly over time as the electrical fence gets triggered. And you see it's slowly going down. I'm in a god mode, so I don't actually die, but it goes down and it goes down and eventually it will stop working. It won't break entirely, you see, I have my friend here to help me just test that out. Thank you very much. And uh, once it's degraded enough, you just repair it and it'll take some re resources, usually forged iron or maybe some electrical parts, depending on how damaged it is. So make sure you have some of those resources with you. During a long haul night, they definitely will not survive the whole time. So if you have nothing else, I highly recommend making sure you put in your... Oh, and that was the wrong way putting in your electric fences. The second one I really love is the dot trap. And you put it down like this, you'll see the green arrow shows, and of course it has the holes in front as well. They'll tell you which direction it's facing. So you just keep on rotating until it's the correct direction. Oh, let me just copy rotation here. So it's like this, so it's gonna shoot across here. And the way you hook that up is you go from the generator. No, you actually don't do that. If I do this and you hear that faint ticking. That actually means it's trying to shoot. And if I do, let me put in just a few of this one here. It'll just keep firing the whole time. And that's going to be a super waste of, uh, of <laughs> darts. So don't do that. Stop, 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 stop. Don't connect it directly. You need something in between in order to trigger it. So we're going to just put some trigger plates here. Uh, 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 trip bar posts are really good as well. But let's just use this one because it's just three. We go from the generator trigger plate from trigger plate one to number two two to number three and three then goes off to the dot traps and so once since this one has power i'm going to basically just shift that across like this so now everything should be triggering what's a step here and we'll see that by one i'm going to go into god mode i'm going to lock ammo i'm going to put in some here lock ammo put some here as well lock ammo and the same thing here and when I step on this one, okay, make sure I step on it. See, the top one is firing, bottom one is firing. These ones are also firing, so everything is firing. So if I'm standing here, I would take massive damage, which is, uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to get hit by them. They take, or they deal, 45 range damage each. They also says they do block damage, which is not true. You see, this one is not taking any damage. If I shoot, it has. See, no damage at all. It does shoot across, but no damage is taken, so don't worry about that. But the darts themselves, they deal massive damage. Each of them is 45 range damage. And of course, that's the speed of it. So you can imagine, it shoots twice per second. So 100, 100, 100, 100. You can imagine how much damage that is per second. They are really, really awesome. Of course, you're expending some resources in order to trigger them. But let's try that out again. Let's uh, take a regular stripper here and nothing happened why let's try that again come back come go there she got hit the problem with zombies is that they often will actually be able to pass through you saw she took a little bit of damage and see if i jump over here if i'm lucky and there she did it it did fire however she makes it across often without dying maybe she'll take a little bit of damage so how do you avoid that? Well, one really common way of doing it is to use poles. And I discussed poles in a previous episode, so take that in mind as well. We're gonna put poles here uh, just to avoid the zombies. Oh, and not that one. To avoid the zombies making it all the way through. So let's do this. Let's do that. And of course, let's also do, see if we can block them from jumping there. This basically means that they can walk up to the pole here, but they can't actually walk through. And that basically stops them. So let's take the Miss Stripper again. See what happens. She stops here because she can't move and she takes damage. Now, one thing that you might, might want to do is that... Yes, thank you very much. Don't get, do that. When you're rotating these ones, try to put them, depending on if you're using a trigger plates or something else, try to put them in this block. So let's do that. What this does is basically it's in this block space, which pushes any zombies slightly further back which means they're much like more likely to take consistent damage let's say she comes up and see she gets hit every time it fires and she jumped up and she fell down and then she's dead so we're blocked off here with using poles and let's bring in a bunch of strippers again come up here see they're being shot at taking damage and slowly goes down you'll notice though that this one has no more ammo 
This one might also, now it has some more ammo, so make sure you load them with a lot of ammo because once they run out, and they will if you're having a long horde, if you don't have enough ammo, then you'll have a problem because, well, there's no more damage being dealt. But beyond that, if you have enough resources to keep these ones fed, and depending on the game stage, depending on what happens, and uh, you'll see there's some issue with the trigger plate, sometimes they stop actually working, maybe it was taking a break, but eventually re-engaged and then she got killed. So. During one horde, the Blood Moon Horde, you can def definitely take thousands of darts. But again, paying for a few th thousands of darts is a lot cheaper than paying for a few thousand 9mm or 7.62 ammo in order to survive the horde. We come now to the Blade Trap. And I really like it. This was an addition previously, and I really like it. It did have some problems in Alpha 18 because it was triggering Demolisher. They fixed that in Alpha 19, which is really good. And the way I normally use it, you can either set it inside walls or just put it up on a pole like this. The thing about it is that it does more damage if it hits them in the head. Feet as well can help and they can actually take off their legs but less damage. And the simple way of uh, setting it up is that you go to your generator, hook it up, right click and now it's spinning. It does take 20 watts so it's fairly resource uh, heavy. If you have it too uh, high up you'll notice that things that can actually pass below it. And the way to avoid that is, let's take that out, you can put one down here. See if I do that and I can actually put a second one, something like that in order to take both sides. And let's do one at the bottom here that is going to be spinning and one at the top. And if you get try to get through, well now I'm actually in God mode, you'll see massive damage. And zombies obviously take a lot of damage too. So let's uh, bring in a couple of zombies here. Thank you, Miss Stripper. Start your action or start your engine. You'll see she comes up. And she got killed, the second one. So let's see, she takes a lot of damage and they actually can withstand quite a lot of them. Let's bring in a bunch of feral ones, you'll see. It don't necessarily kill all of them before they get through simply because they run so fast. But you see, they got through, but they had just a little bit over 20 hit points, almost 30 out of their max 200 plus, 250 plus. So it's really, really good at just dealing massive damage. Now. You saw the bottom one took out their legs and now it's crawling so that can also happen and you whack it in the head. One of the downside with these ones is just like the electric fence, they do degrade with you. So depending on how much damage they deal out, they take a certain percentage of the reflected damage. So you have to repair them now and then, let's do that as well. Right click, that took some steel I believe, that's the forged steel, it's not iron. And let's do a second one, also so forged steel. So make sure you have resources to repair them overnight. When they take sufficient damage, let's see if I do that, 700, and as it goes down to, bam, you see it goes down to 500 or below, it actually stops working, it stops spinning, it's still there, it's still there in the way, but it's no longer spinning and dealing any damage, so it's really important that you go ahead and repair them once they stop spinning and start taking too much damage. What could happen is that the lower uh, hit points they have, if you have a cop exploding next to them, they would probably be taken out. If it's fully uh, repaired, it's unlikely that even a cop uh, damage would uh, take them out. But like this, it would be. So one repair, you saw it took some steel. Another one, some more steel. So make sure you keep this one in good health. They do take quite a lot of resources to repair steel. However, they also deal massive damage. And because, let's see here, let's do one regular stripper. Now she has... 125 hit points and you saw 8 damage there and 12 damage there. So total of 20 damage out of the 2000 each in order to kill one zombie. That's actually not too bad. Let's do another one. You see it went down to 76 and 84. Of course the bottom one is useful for when you're having crawlers, maybe you're having dogs. Let's bring in a dog like that. Let's see if it comes out and there you go. Without the bottom one he would just run straight through. I personally love to just nest the different traps, have some blade traps, have some electric fences and have some dart traps because they'll each deal damage in a different way. Blade traps are just around them. You'll see if I'm standing here, no damage. If I go too close, I do take damage. So it's really just around it, whereas dart traps can fire across gaps in your bases or in corridors. And we're finally coming to the really fun turrets. Now turrets are, what can I say, they're really effective, but they also have a big downside. So let's put down a couple of turrets here just for 
point defense here. Let's start with the shotgun turret. Let's see, that's the auditor. So let's start with the shotgun turret. Now you can put this up on the wall and everything. I'm just gonna put it like here. I'm gonna put down an auditor like this. And then I'm gonna hook them up. I am going to, let's see, hook up just the shotgun turret first. You see it takes 15 watt, now it's active. Once it's active, you can hold, uh, hit E in order to go into it. You can determine basically what's the targeting going to be. It's going to shoot yourself, shoot your allies, shoot strangers, or shoot zombies. Normally, you just leave it at that unless you are on a PvP server and you want to kill people. And then you put in some shotgun shells and you lock ammo. Make sure you lock the ammo, otherwise it will not be firing. You also can go into the camera preview and sort of aim it a little bit better depending on where it is. Let's say, obviously, this is a good good uh, location and then shooting towards this area and it's active as you can see by the fact that this one is come on oh, wrong one run tool this one 15 watt so if i put in let's say a uh, zombie dog one two three and dead let's do another zombie here let's put in a stripper one and she's down it's no longer targeting and as she comes up and it takes her out again really effective let's bring down the time here to during daytime just to make sure they don't run so it's really useful what if i take a few of them what happens one two three and it's reloading and shot again shot again and reload so what happens is that every four shots is actually going to be reloading so if you have too many of the zombies it's not going to be able to keep up now it is a shotgun so it does massive damage up close but if they get past this arc you see what happens, the zombie is through and you have a bit of a problem. So, by themselves, they're really good against individual zombies. If you start getting hordes that are groups of them, it can be a little bit difficult for a single auto, well, shotgun auto turret to actually keep up. So that's something that you really want to keep in mind. Don't just rely on one. Let's do unlock ammo. Let's uh, connect the auto SMG turret. And as you can expect, it's an SMG turret. Let's put in some 9mm here. Put that in, same thing targeting, same thing with camera preview, lock ammo. Let's target it something like this. The good thing about the SMG turret is it's got a further range. It can shoot up to 30 blocks, so that's really good. The shotgun turret definitely has a shorter range at I believe about 15 blocks. Let's bring in a couple of strippers. Hey, it starts shooting and they're down. Let's bring in a few more of them. Shoot, 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 now it's reloading and it's gonna be shooting again, reloading, shooting again, but you saw, it didn't actually kill the zombies as effectively as the shotgun turret does. So, like any weapons, auto turret is really good at range because you can shoot a lot further, but it doesn't deal the massive damage that the shotgun turret does. Just like in regular weapons, shotgun is really good for close defense, doesn't have the range. Auto turret, if I spawn something over, let's do that. It's still hitting them. The shotgun turret would not. Let's see if I bring it even further away. You see, it's still targeting and it's still shooting them. It's not hitting with all of them, but it's still tar targeting. If I do something like this, lock ammo, you'll see I do that again. The shotgun turret now is able to hit it, but if I push it all the way down the, like there, Shotgun turret is no longer targeting because it's a little bit too far. So having a few turrets, uh, mixing up the auto turrets, the shotgun turrets with the SMG turrets is really, really useful because the SMG turrets will take care of them at a distance. Really good against vultures. That's really one of my favorite uses. As when using the shotgun turrets, they're really close range defense. One issue that you will be having, and I'm going to unlock the ammo here. I'm going to unlock the ammo here because I don't want to have massive destruction. The problem is still though that, oh, no, whoa, okay. They will actually be able to set off the C4 on the demolisher and that's really, really bad. So a little bit like the blade trap in alpha 18, if they take off uh, or set off the demolisher, he will deal massive damage to a base. He will kill zombies around it, but it might not really be worth it. So. The way I normally use them is I sort of a fallback defense if they break through the walls, last defense, have a few turrets, take out anything that breaks through, but I try not to have these ones shoot outside of my walls because you shoot at a demolisher, he'll explode, he'll take out the wall and all of a sudden you have a breach and they'll be going through there.
or use the SMG auto turrets just as an air defense. You do something like this, you aim it upwards, depending on where you place it on top of your rooftop of your, your building, and he will take care of vultures. Let's see, can I bring in a vulture here? Vulture, oh, come on. They're not uh, playing ball. Let's see if I give them a little bit of more of a... Here to shoot? No? Come on, game, don't do that to me. No ammo? No? Oh! <laughs> Forgot to lock the ammo. See, that's what happens if you got to, to lock the ammo. It won't shoot. It'll just beep a little bit. But you saw it took out a bunch of the vultures here really quickly. And that's one of my preferred ways of positioning these turrets. Use them as air defense. So we've come to the end of the electricity trap guide and we do have some vultures in the rafters. I'm going to have to hunt them down as well. Hopefully you enjoy this and like I said, it's the sale is 50% off. Everything must go and I'll throw in a TV only if you subscribe to my channel. Remember to do that. And of course, next time we'll be looking at tips and tricks. So uh, catch me then and I'll catch you again. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.